Hello YouTubers and hello haunters out there. I'm sure a lot of you guys have gone out onto the uh, YouTube and searched around for Halloween flicker lights. Well, I just came up with the best solution all around. There's no microcontrollers required. There's no fluorescent tube starters required. No fancy electronics. Just nine parts. All as shown below. You got a circuit board. You got a fuse, you got your bulb. Uh, everything is based on a simple device that you've seen before, the old candle flicker LEDs. I'm using that to put out the uh, signal that is required for the randomness of the pulses. Basically, the circuit is all controlled by this candle flicker LED, and I tap off of the output of that uh, drive a optocoupler which drives a power triac which is a solid state electronic AC switch and that drives the bulb and I have a one amp fuse for protection I will demo the circuit for you now okay I'm using a 12 volt battery because uh, most haunters use a 12 volt power supply for their devices I just have me using a battery here for ease of demonstration on the video you could use a wall wart or uh, any kind of 12 volt uh, source that you uh, would like to uh, work with the uh, circuit does seem to work uh, down to 6 volts so uh, I tested it one time it seemed uh, very workable now as you can see let me zoom in a little bit here this is the circuit board and you can see whoop, 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 sorry about that I don't have a video tripod there's the circuit board I've got uh, a candle flicker LED with a resistor I've got a transistor on there another resistor controlling the current through the optocoupler through that uh, extra LED uh, you can see the candle flicker LED is actually swamping out the camera and you can see the other LED that's flickering uh, and that is driving the input of the opto isolator and over here you can see the power triac that actually controls the 110 volts now I will provide power and zoom out and provide power to the uh, AC power to the circuit and you'll actually see it running now okay let me turn on the power and there you go that is with the lights on and I will turn off my lights here and you can see it's gonna be swamped out a little bit so it is actually going off and uh, this is a 75 watt 120 volt bulb that is typical in the United States because uh, we use a 120 volt system uh, you would use uh, 220 or 240 volts overseas but uh, this is a 75 watt bulb I designed a circuit to drive a maximum of 75 watts uh, the bulbs actually look better if you use one that is a lower wattage because it gives you a nice warm glow as opposed to the harsh light of a 75 watt but I just used the 75 watts here for demo purposes there is a one amp fuse in a circuit so it will protect any kind of short circuits in your bulbs or circuit wiring if you happen to uh, wire something wrong or uh, if uh, somebody steps on the wires if you're running running them outside it will blow a one amp fast blow fuse let me put the light back on here but you can see it works really really well um, uh, there's no fancy electronics, there's no microcontrollers, no programming required, no unreliable fluorescent light starters that uh, everybody else uses. Uh, you don't have the noise generated by the starter. Uh, and, and this thing, once you wire it, it's reliable. I tested it. Nothing, nothing gets warm. The uh, uh, ambient temperature in my room is about 81 right now and uh, degrees Fahrenheit and the, the high, hottest the device on the board is running at like 92 degrees Fahrenheit so 
the triac is not getting warm so as long as you stay below the 75 watt uh, maximum wattage of the bulb uh, and do not put a larger than one amp fast blow fuse in the circuit you'll be fine but again you are playing with 120 volts uh, do not work with this unless you understand about high voltage this is you were doing this under your own risk so if you're taking a chance do this at your own risk because this is 120 volts not something to play with now let's look at the schematic let's turn everything off disconnect the battery turn the AC off here and move everything out of the way and here is the schematic okay you can do a screenshot of that freeze it for yourself and like I said the minimal components you got one two three four five six seven eight parts nine parts counting the fuse not counting the light okay this thing here I'll go through the circuit in general this thing is designed for 120 volts but you can go to 230 or 240 uh, you would have to change uh, this resistor and this optocoupler but we'll talk about that later so basically you have 12 volts coming in here you got the thousand ohm resistor feeding your uh, flicker candle LED and it's pulsing and we're tapping off that center point there taking extracting the signal from the uh, LED flicker light LED and this goes into this transistor it was uh, what they call an emitter follower and it's amplifying the signal coming off of there going through this resistor through your optocoupler input which is the LED infrared LED input and then I it goes and ends up through this LED here this happens to be a old LED I had laying around it's a junky boring dim LED from 30 years ago uh, but what I needed was the voltage drop of 3 volts for a yellow LED uh, the circuit will not operate properly with that additional voltage drop now you have the opposite side the output side of your optocoupler this is a triac output that is driving the power triac okay you've got a 1000 ohm I'm sorry a 220 ohm resistor here coming out through the secondary of your optocoupler feeding the gate of your triac this triac controls the main 120 volts AC here uh, you got your neutral here your hot here your hot goes to your 1 amp fast blow fuse and then there's your load that is the 75 watt 120 volt light don't go any higher than that uh, if you do this fuse will start to blow you don't need that much light the lower wattage bulbs do give a better uh, light a more pleasing effect because it's a dimmer orangey effect as opposed to the bright 75 water now as I mentioned before uh, the, if, if you're doing this overseas in Europe where they use 230 240 volts AC you'll have to change this resistor you'll have to double it this is a 220 ohm you probably want a 470 ohm 470 ohm resistor there this optal coupler will have to be changed this is an MOC 3041 okay that is only good for up to uh, 400 volts peak you would probably you'll have to go up to an MOC 3061 which is a 600 volt peak so that'll be a, a, a that'll allow you to uh, run this circuit at 230 volts or 240 volts mains AC this triac is already sized properly it is a 600 volt 4 amp triac so this thing is more than large enough to control uh, and handle the wattage of a 70 5 watt uh, incandescent bulb so this is the best circuit I think uh, it replaces the uh, fluorescent starter bulb 
and anything that's microprocessed or controlled you don't need any special voltages on this you can go anywhere from 6 to 12 volts to, to power the primary side of the optocoupler you could use 120 or 230 just the way I described it just be careful this is 120 volts or 240 volts if you're in Europe or overseas somewhere be careful this is not something to uh, uh, take lightly you can get injured or killed um, but I think you will enjoy it because once you build this you will have no issues with uh, the thing failing like the fluorescent starter tubes uh, or tube starters uh, so enjoy happy haunting be safe don't do anything electrically unsafe and have a good time and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will close with the circuit working get everything set up here oh we got uh, get disconnected here uh, let's see and connect that and I will connect the 110 And there you go. Happy haunting. Enjoy.